Death himself was punting on it. A voice spoke down into the darkness. And he said to me, if I go on that boat, I'll never come back to Earth again. And I don't mind with it to you people, when I was a drug dealer, I had enemies. And I was screaming. It was a very real place. By God's grace, he brought me back into my body. He brought me back to life. I can testify to you today, I died and came back to life. Doctors can't prove it with scientific equipment. It's a spiritual experience. Jesus wants to know you today. Would you like to know him? People of Leicester, lend me your ears. How many of you want to have peace in your heart today? How many want to have peace of mind? How many want to know where you go when you die? You can have a true relationship today with God himself. Through his son, Jesus Christ. He died for you 2,000 years ago. He is waiting for you. He hung on that cross for you. Have you got a moment to hear about him? I challenge anyone here today, any of you that are sick, if you step forward, Jesus Christ will heal you today. He loves you. He died for you. Experience the truth of Jesus Christ today. You can have a true relationship with him. You can hear him speak to you today. How many of you are sinners today? What sins were you committing last night? Would you like to know freedom? Some of you may be battling with drugs. Some of you may be battling gambling. Sinners. Sinners. God loves them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how they go to repent, repent of all sin. Repent of all sin. It's rejecting Jesus Christ that sends you to hell. Repent of all sin. Not at all. Tell that to the mayor of Sodom. He's a little born, isn't he? Afternoon, ladies. You know, that. You know Jesus Christ today. How many of you are heading in Bergen down today with sin? Praise the Lord. There's uh, two sets of sinners. One of the sets of sinners is in heaven with God. The other set is in hell, burning eternal fire. The book of Isaiah says, verse 66, Their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. They are those of rejected God, rebelled against God. But the sinners who are in heaven have repented of their sin. They have become conscious that there will be a day of judgment and that every idle word and deed shall be judged by the living God. It might not seem as if there's much justice today in the world, in this country, but there will come a day of reckoning for Britain. It used to be called Great Britain when it used to follow God, but now it's just fallen, fallen empire, once great nation, which is now rejecting God. Very strangely, in America, it's not legal to teach the Bible in schools. Yet in Britain it's still 
lawful, it's still legal to teach the Bible, it's still legal to pray to Jesus Christ, it's still legal to teach the gospel in schools. And yet, very strangely, we switch on daytime television and we get absolute uh, heretics, beyond heretics, such as Philip Schofield rejecting Christianity, rejecting the gospel continuously, ruining this nation, ruining the once powerful nation, which brought the gospel around the world to India, to Africa, to all the nations of the world. But today, the people are made ashamed to say that they are a Christian or that they believe in God. Because daytime television and Philip Schofield tell you that if you're a Christian, you're evil and wicked. And you should allow young children, three, four years old, to get sex change operations according to daytime television. Of course, you should allow uh, good men and women who are good at their jobs to lose their jobs for wearing maybe a cross, which has happened in the news. Many incidents like this has happened in the news. And what do the Christians' leaders do? They just lie down like little lap dogs and do nothing. So it's down to we the people to stand up for truth, stand up for righteousness, stand up for the gospel. Hallelujah. That Jesus came and died for your soul to redeem you from death and hell. That's the reality of what Jesus did. All the, way, the major world religions talk about life after death. Every single one of them. Buddhism talks about reincarnation as well. How you can come back as a butterfly or a dog or a cat. Sadly, this is not the truth. After death, you'll go to a place of fire, a place of torment where all the sins you've got in this body, in your body just now, you shall be continually reminded of these sins, continually feel the pain of these sins which you've caused people, perhaps you've lied to people, perhaps you've stolen, perhaps you've disobeyed your parents. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. So the Ten Commandments are God's standard for humanity. Love God and your neighbor as yourself. This is the standard, but today these standards are slipping rapidly in this nation and around the world. You should remind yourselves that God is love, that Jesus Christ came to die for your sin. Jesus came to give you eternal life. Jesus came to give you knowledge of the living God, a relationship with the living God. Jesus came to remove your sin as far as the east is from the west. Many of you today, your minds are continuously on sin, continuously on a girlfriend, a boyfriend, cheating on that girlfriend and boyfriend, breaking a Sabbath, disrespecting your parents, coveting, lying, etc, etc. This is the fallen nature which we've inherited from Adam and Eve. But when you come to the Lord for forgiveness and mercy, He will forgive you. He will give you new life through His Son, Jesus. When you're reminded about what he did for us on the cross there at Passover and Easter time. The Bible does teach that Jesus is the Passover lamb who takes away the sin of the world. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. The Bible teaches also that God will set up his kingdom during the Feast of Tabernacles. So all these biblical Biblical festivals 
speak of a promise that God has for humanity through the Messiah, through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says, all have fallen short of the glory of God. By Jesus came to redeem us from death and hell. Praise the Lord. The gospel is good news to the sinner because we're all sinners. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says, that if you say you haven't sinned, you are a liar, and the truth is not in you. That's what the Gospel of John, the Epistle of John, says if you say you have not sinned, you are a liar, and the truth is not in you. All of us have sinned once in our life, and that sin is enough to separate us from the presence of God. And we must repent of that sin. We must allow Jesus to come in through the power of the Holy Spirit, accept him into our life. The Bible says you shall be a new creature in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. A new creature in Christ Jesus. We shall have the nature of God within the Holy Spirit. We shall know God's name. We shall be written, as the Bible says, in your right hand and forehead. The Antichrist will come and issue a mark one day. We see that this is the way to go. The mark of the beast is spoken of in the Bible when society is at war with each other and the Antichrist comes and says, take this mark and uh, you know, we'll give you peace and security. But the Bible says during that time of peace and safety, when they cry peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come on them. Sudden destruction shall come on them. Hallelujah. Why? Because the society is filled with sin, is breaking God's commandments, is doing things contrary to the will and the nature of God. The Antichrist promises you peace and safety, but gives you destruction. Jesus Christ promises you eternal life. Jesus Christ came to die for your sin. He didn't tell you to be easy, but when we're born again, we receive the Spirit of God, the peace of God. Jesus is the Tsar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace, as written about in the Bible, as written about in the Quran, as written about in other holy books, which you reject Jesus as the Son of God. Why do you reject Jesus as the Son of God? But even the Quran says that Jesus was born of a virgin in Surah 19. When Jesus was born, he said, Blessed is the day I am born, blessed is the day I die, blessed is the day I am resurrected. As the gospel, my friends. Hallelujah. We need faith in the one true God through his son Jesus. The Hebrew name is Yeshua HaMashiach. The name means salvation. Salvation. Do you have salvation? I received salvation over 20 years ago. As a very dark place, I was just about finished with school. I had uh, just a teenager, I suppose, doing things that teenagers do. And I was out one day and I heard the gospel. I heard it before, but this time the Spirit of God really spoke to my heart. And I asked the man, how do I get saved? And he said, repent of your sin and ask Jesus into your life. And he said, I'll come into your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I, I received that, that very same night I was born again. And it took me a number of years to get baptized, to find the church that I could go to, continue to read the Bible. And so, what do you need to be saved? You need faith. You like faith, ask God for faith. You need a Bible so you can read the Word of God for yourself. You need the blood of the Lamb because according to the law, blood 
is necessary for the atonement of sin. If you don't have an offering of blood to God, then your religion is worthless, it's useless before God. That blood that Jesus shed on the cross is the atonement for your sin. Going all the way back to Cain and Abel, Cain was the one who offered God vegetables. Abel was the one who sacrificed the lamb. Remember the story about Abraham was told to sacrifice Isaac. He was about to do it, bring the knife down, and God says, Stop! I provided a lamb, and the lamb was sacrificed. And all these sacrifices in the Old Testament of the Lamb points to the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who takes away the sin of the world. He takes away your sin if you allow it. If you want to know God, you're created tonight. You're one prayer away from knowing God and being saved. Religion cannot assure you of eternal life. Only through faith in Jesus Christ alone can assure you of eternal life. And once you're born again, you have to walk by faith. You have to trust God. God will give you a new heart and a new mind. And you shall be transformed from the inside out. Hallelujah. And your fleshly lust shall die. And the new creature shall be born within you. Known as the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit shall give you life and life in abundance. Jesus says, I have not come to condemn the world, I have came to save it. Because the world is already condemned in sin and hypocrisy and wickedness. All we need to do is look around us, look in the mirror, and there we see a sinner. I spoke to my Catholic friend last week and he said, we were uh, bapti uh, baptizing. I think a few of their children, and it's called confirmation. And I said, the only thing the Bible can confirm you as is a sinner. That's the only thing it can be confirmed as according to the Word of God. If you are ready to admit you're a sinner, you're ready for salvation. If you're not ready to admit you're a sinner, you're not ready to meet Jesus. Your heart is still filled with pride, rebellion against God, anger towards God. But when you come down again, you lose that anger, you lose that pride, you lose that self-loathing, you lose that love for sin and the things of the flesh and the hunger for the things of this world. And you begin to hunger for God. You begin to hunger for more gifts of the Holy Spirit, just as men in the past have done, such as... Um, they've gone out and been born again and been mysteries in Africa and India. Hallelujah. And coveted the things of the living God. Not coveted the things of the world, coveted a new wife, another wife, coveted another car, coveted the things of God, the things of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And Jesus is the king of the kingdom of heaven. You cannot get into a kingdom without knowing the king, permission from the king, and that's what it is. That's who Jesus is. Not just the son of a carpenter, he's the son of the living God. Hallelujah. He didn't just make things with his hands, he created, you and I, he created the heavens and earth through his word. And Jesus Christ, even in the Quran, is known as the word of the living God. And one of the series is referred to as the Word from God, a Word from God. In the Bible, He is the Word of God. He's the only prophet in the Quran is referred to as a Word from God. And every single religious scholar believed that God spoke the world into existence. Every single one. Christian, Jewish, Islamic, and Jesus is the Word of God who spoke the universe into existence and took the soil of the ground and the clay of the ground and formed Adam out of the clay of the ground and breathed into him, breathed life into Adam and he became a living soul. 
Hallelujah. But because of Adam's rebellion and sin, the second Adam came and died for the sin of the first Adam and gave us new life in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do you know Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior?